Hi again everyone. <coughs> Not done a video for a, for a few months now. Um, so, this is um, going to be a video on my um, SRW, which is this one here that I did a few months ago, um, all on my channel. Um, this is using the original SRWI um, uh, board that came with the wheel. Now, all these buttons are all uh, from, from that original wheel, it's just that it's been obviously modified to accept a quick release and I've changed the <coughs> the um, paddle shifters. But the one thing that's been pissing me off big time is um, because it's um, an SRW uh, um, what do they call it, where you turn left and right, the steering. I can't think what it's called. Um, oh God, it, it, it interferes with all my other games. I have to keep taking USBs out, plugging USBs in. When I've got the SRW and the G, uh, G, um, G25 rim together, the G25 won't use force feedback while the SRW is in, so I have to unplug the SRW, the motion sensors I'm thinking about, sorry, that detect left and right because it's originally a wheel for uh, Sim Raceway and it was designed for that, so it uses that. Of course, when I've got this plugged in with my G25, it gets in the way and it's been pissing me off. As much as I've loved using it for the last year, it's really been pissing me off. So what I've decided to do with the second wheel that I bought, because the motherboard was gone, again, it's all on my video, I've decided to do what I thought I wanted to do a good while ago. Uh, and what made me do it is I saw a, a guy's wheel that he'd attempted to do with an SLIM. Here we go. The SLM SIM display, which is, I'll just get this out. It's a Leo Bodner SIM display. Um, that used to be housed in a little box in front of my monitor, under my monitor, so I can see it when I'm using uh, my, my G25. Obviously, I, I use that normally with these lights. But I thought I want to I want to make my own wheel from scratch and get away from that motion sensor malarkey. So this is pure. Um, it's going to be a pure SLIM conversion into a um, SWR S1 wheel using this board, which takes 16 buttons or eight encoders and also five extra LEDs which I am, well, I've ordered from eBay. I will be putting those in at a later time. You'll see that. This is going to be a two-part video. A two-part video, sorry. Um, so what I've done is I've constructed um, an MDF because really it's the only material that I can use myself without the ability of having special tools and jigsaws. And Well, I've got a jigsaw, but you know what I mean? Proper cutting stuff. So I thought... I'll go for some three four mil aluminium um, aluminium MDF. Um, so what I've done is, if you think of the SRW, the original wheel, this this bit's plastic. So what I've done is I've I'll take this off and show you. I've completely gutted the SRW, cut all this out here, and you can still see some of the old. I mean, just don't worry about all the dust and whatever. I've been working on it right up to this video. Um, that's where the old lights used to go. Um, what I'm doing is I've, I've uh, completely gutted it. Just excuse me while I just take that off. I've completely gutted it with a Dremel and cut everything out. Yeah, it might look a mess, but believe me, everything fits. I've had all the buttons in, tried everything, and it, everything works. The only thing that I've had to do, uh, because I wanted, I'll show you the buttons, I wanted buttons to go on these edges. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the, the, the buttons that I've bought from Leo Bodner to fit in here because it's obviously this, this wheel, this part has a handle, fits on with these three holes and there's just not enough room in there. So that's why I've kept the, the top and bottom original micro switches. Well, not micro switches, buttons that are on the board. I'll show you them on, on the board that I've cut up. 
So what I've done is I've I've just kept four, um, which will be obviously these four here, and everything else is wiped out. Um, so I've ground out everything that I, I require. That fits over the. That fits over there like that. Um, and then the new piece goes over the top and it's just and it's exactly the same I don't want to be messing around with that too much because I don't want to damage that because they're all to, you can't buy those SLAs anymore SLIMs um, so what I've done is I've fabricated a new piece to go on top to cover everything and I'm using these uh, knitter state-of-the-art buttons from Leo Bodner um, they run at nearly £10 a pop, £9.90 something, 96 I think. There you go, knitter. And these, they all fit in these holes. I'll just pause it a second. Like so. Um, I've just put the two, these two end ones in. Um, very, very nice. This piece here is solid brass, I think it is. I don't know if you can see inside there, but even, I thought these were plastic, but they're not, they're brass. Um, so what I've done is I've ordered eight, so there's 80 quid just for the buttons. One to go there, one to go there, one, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. Um, yep. And so they're all the. I mean, they come nicely packed as well. They're all individually sealed in these things here. Um, and these are all the the tops for them. I've got uh, yellow, red, and white. Um, they're all the tops for them. Um, I'm also putting an encoder in. Um, I don't need to have, because the original SRW has got three buttons there, which only one of them work properly anyway. Um, I'm only going to be using the middle one because I've got two DSD boxes and they've got four encoders on each, so I've got absolutely plenty of buttons, encoders, you name it. I don't need them. What I wanted was more push buttons, so I'm going to fit this. Uh, I bought this one here thinking it would be all right, the long shaft one, but it sticks out way too much and I didn't want to file it down or cut it or anything because I didn't want to knacker it. So I ordered a, a smaller shaft, so that will fit in there. Again, all from Leo Bodner and a nice um, top for it that screws in. Um, and also I've got... Um, Um, just bear with me a sec. Yeah, sorry for that. I was looking for these. I bought these on-off switches uh, for things like headlights on, wipers on, non-momentary -mom no, non switches, these toggles. And these aren't from Leo Bodner. These are just uh, from eBay, but they are very good ones. And they're going to fit in there. Um, so... Again, oh, oh, the nails crack. So every um, every button, every every button that's going to be used on the uh, SLIM, are going to be used all sixteen of those. And that just drops in now. Obviously, I've got to put everything in. I stand up like that. I've got to put everything in. But you can imagine all these in. I mean, I, I could put it in now, but. I don't want to keep pulling these plastic because these just snap on and I don't want to wear them out. So I'm going to do another video. This is only part one. And these are all the uh, three pin plugs that all fit on the board to save me soldering all the tabs. All I've got to do is just solder these onto the end of the switches. And then to finish it off, I'm going to be using this the carbon fibre wrap that I bought from eBay. Looks pretty nice. I don't know how well that's going to come out. If it don't come out very well, I'll just paint it like I painted that one, but MDF is a lot harder to paint. 
So uh, um, I think that's about it, really. Um, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. This is what I did with the four switches in the corners. Uh, the, the two on the ends come off at its own lead, uh, which are here. These ones here. Yeah, they, these solder on the ends there like that. They're going to go back in their places on the two ends. And then these, the two top ones, I've just cut out the, uh, cut up, cut away from the, from the, um, hang on a tick. Yeah, they're just uh, cut out and uh, put back in place on there like that, all stuck down with super glue and um, hot glue. I'm just going to run hot glue all the way around, all the way around here, just to hold everything in. I've, I've had to gouge gouge that out a bit for the um, encoder, just so it it um, it pops through because there's not really there's not really a lot of thread, so I've just had to bully that down a bit. Again, you're not going to see it, and that's basically it. So it's going to be a full non SRW rubbish I've had enough of it I can just plug this straight in get on any sim Assetto project cars automobile list I've not have any issues with my uh, wheel now obviously I've got to do all the wiring which uh, will be coming part two so uh, I will uh, hopefully do that soon and um, get it all finished like that I'm hoping to keep this one like it is, so I can carry on using it. The only thing I haven't got is the, the metal plate at the back here. So I might have to either, I might either get this cut out from a guy that does uh, some steel work for me, or I'll just unscrew it and pop this one on there and retire it. I don't know, because I've got the quick release um, G25 wheel for, for GT cars. I've got my sequential shifter and all that, so. I don't have to worry about using the paddles, um, so I've got plenty of options. So I don't know. I might retire that rim completely. I mean, it still works if I just plug in the if I don't have anything else plugged in other than the SRW and the G and the G25. After a few attempts, they seem to work together. It seems that you have to configure the G25 rim and go through all its programs: left steering, right steering, throttle, brake, clutch. Un uh, plug in your SRW. And then it should work, but I've found that when you go back to it later on, it um, it stuffs up again. You, and then you, you come out of the pits and you haven't got no f force feedback because it, the motion sensor's getting in the way. So I just had enough of it. As much as I, I ranted on about the wheel and the, it's just like somewhere that I have to put up with, but not anymore. So this is going to be a say a massive. It's been a massive task for now, but it's coming on well. So um, I'll get back to you in. Uh, in video two. Thanks for now.